Hey guys, welcome back to NBA Orb. Today we'll talk about why the WNBA is irrelevant. Let's head into it. Number 3. The Story of the WNBA I'm not sure what most of the fans who watched the WNBA debut on June 21, 1997 were thinking about the future of professional basketball for women. But if you could take the people who watched the very first game and transport them immediately to the present day, I guess a good number of them would have the same answer. This is it, as in a league with the NBA's money and marketing background has grown to practically nothing more than it was in 21 years. With each franchise now valued at $1 billion or more, the NBA is more popular than ever, generating more than $7 billion in revenue. The WNBA, meanwhile, continues to muddle along, playing in front of more empty seats than full ones with a majority of sports fans failing to gain any traction. I spent 7 years living in Phoenix. Not only are the Mercury one of the original franchises of the league, they are also one of the most successful, having won 3 titles. The biggest star of the team is Diana Taurasi, who is one of the most recognizable women's basketball players in the world. And yet, all but invisible is the team. I have never seen anyone wearing Mercury merchandise. I have never spoke to any fan of sports who spoke of going to a game. The Mercury games are not on local radio like most WNBA teams, and the only coverage the team gets on sports radio is a mention of the score at the end of a sports update from the previous night's game. Obviously, this situation is not unique to Phoenix. The WNBA's first games were, as with any league, sloppy, but the league had its share of stars. Eight members of the women's USA team that had won a gold medal at the 1996 Summer Olympics a year earlier were in the league. Players such as Rebecca Lobo, Lisa Leslie, and Cheryl Swoops have already been recognized as some of the world's best. When it launched, the WNBA had eight teams, all with tie-ins to the NBA team in the same market. In NBA arenas, the teams played, often with the nicknames that were somewhat associated with their NBA counterparts, like the Houston Rockets and the Houston Comets, Charlotte Hornets and the Charlotte Sting, Utah Jazz and the Utah Stars. Number 2. The WNBA Today more than two decades later, there are only 12 franchises in the WNBA. The New York Liberty, Los Angeles Sparks, and Phoenix Mercury are still in place today. It averaged 9,684 per game in the WNBA's first season. That average, a year later, jumped to 10,869. By 2000, participation had dropped to 9,074 per game, below the first season, and since 2002, it has never become more than 9,000 a game. There have been eight franchises that have won titles during their 21 seasons. There are no longer three of those teams, including the Houston Comets, who won four straight titles in the first four seasons of the league. Number 1. The Data Forbes.com's David Barry last year compared the attendance of the WNBA after 20 years to that of the NBA and MLB in their first 20 years. The average attendance was only 6,631 per game in year 21 of the NBA in 1996-67. While well, the 21st season of the MLB in 1921 produced an average attendance of only 7,391 per game. By those metrics, Barry argued the average attendance of 7,716 fans per game by the WNBA indicates the league is on the right path. But it's definitely a case of apples and oranges to compare the growth of sports leagues from that long ago. In the early 1920s, MLB didn't have national TV contracts. In fact, 1921 was the first time that local radio had ever broadcast a game. In the mid-1960s, NBA television coverage was a little over one game a week on ABC, and local broadcasting rights were usually limited to a handful of games each season. Major League Soccer, which debuted one year before the WNBA in 1996, is perhaps a far more comparison of the WNBA's lack of audience growth in two decades. In their inaugural season, the MLS had an average attendance million fans, more than three times as many as its inaugural season. Few would argue that more sports fans follow basketball than soccer, so why has MLS enjoyed a significant growth in 20 years while the WNBA hasn't? Basketball is growing internationally, and when the WNBA is not in season, many WNBA players go overseas and make more than they make in the United States. But converting existing basketball fans in the US to fans of professional women's basketball is difficult. This brings us to the end of our video, I hope you enjoyed it, hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.